you and welcome to another video. Now today I'm going to be looking at a band I have never looked at before, a band called Kullfront, which I believe means cold front in Swedish. Uh, now I was contacted a little while ago by a uh, guy called Husni, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name horribly, um, and he asked me to have a look at it and he described it as a his music as a mix of melodic thrash metal mixed with death metal so you know i asked him you know can you tell me a bit more about your band you know can you give me a bit of information and can you suggest you know he just said can you check out our music so i said you know could you suggest one of your tracks and he put forward his favorite of their tracks um he's very generously provided me with the translation of the lyrics because the song is in swedish uh, but he told me a little bit about the band and the information i have here is in 2019 husni and patrick uh, initiated musical meetings which two years later would form the band Kalfront. Uh, the singer and songwriter husni mercer i'm sorry if i pronounced your name wrong um has a past with the band rob tier i've heard that i've heard the name of that band before i think of I think I've covered another band where one of the members was enrolled here. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, they began a collaboration with the guitarist and co-composer Patrick Forland. Uh, their common goal was to create uh, a sound uh, with Husin's um, past history as a vocalist in thrash and power metal. Um, and this would meet with Patrick's roots if in technical death metal. You know, heavy re heavy riffs meeting sing-along friendly melodies, as they put it. Um, put together in one power-charged homing missile package, as he's put it here. Uh, bassist Mikael Sandorf uh, from The Duskfall, uh, and drummer Sebastian Lindgren, also from The Duskfall, uh, were recruited shortly afterwards to form the rest of the band. Uh, the band is deeply rooted in the harsh climate of northern Sweden, uh, which undoubtedly leaves its mark on its population. Uh, the cold existence of the orchestra naturally influenced the outcome. Uh, and as Husni Morser sums it up in the debut single, Bites, what you see is what you get. Um... Genuine and without cosmetic procedures, Colfront sets to music an existence in a forgotten margin where Morser's profound Swedish language reflections provide lyrical depth and character to the musical discharge. Uh, the band sums themselves up with their high energy and captivating music in just three words, Swedish fucking metal. So there you go. Um, now, he did say that a lot of the songs that he writes come from his personal life experiences, things that he's been through himself. And the track he su suggested that I look at was a track called Alpha Omega, which he says is his personal favourite. Um, and he was very, like I said, very kindly provided me with a translation of the lyrics, because like I said, they're in Swedish. So, you know, thank him very, very much for that. You know, it's very nice when people, you know, go through the effort to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what to expect from this. You know, he said a mix between melodic thrash and death metal, you know, and he said that Patrick has a history in technical death. So, you know, could be some complex riffs in here, I wonder. Um, so we'll jump into this and see what we've got. So it's Alpha Omega by Cullfront. Let's have a look. Alpha, min omega, du är med i 
very short track. Um, so there you go. <clears throat> Alpha Omega by Carl Front. Very interesting. I mean, it started out, boom, straight in there. You know, there was no fanning about. There was no, like, intro or anything. Just boom, straight in. It's a very interesting sound for the band. You know, the... The vocal style and the actual sort of rhythm of the music it's got a sort of 80s 90s sort of heavy metal slash power metal feel to it you know you, you could almost this is almost the sort of thing that could exist around the time of like dio and sabbath and that sort of thing you know it's got that sort of feel to the sound of the vocals and there's something about the performance of the vocals it reminded me reminded me of another band but i could not put my finger on who it was and it's actually really bugging me because it very much reminded me of someone the vocal pro um, aspect of it. it reminded me so much of another band and i cannot for the life of me think who it was and it's annoying but mixing that sort of style with the death the death metal sort of side of it you know because obviously they've got the heavy chunky guitar riffs in the background which you've got sort of very death metal element to it, but they're sort of edging into thrash metal, death metal sort of sound. So it's quite an interesting sound. I like the sound of it. Um, so the mixture of the two, you know, the mixture of that vocal style and the musical style is very interesting to me. You know, he said they he thought they had a very unique and different sound from a lot of bands. And, you know, I think he's right. You know, it's a very unusual sound, but there is still something about it that feels familiar if you if that makes any sense you know it's a very unusual sound but something very familiar at the same time um now like i said he provided me with a uh, translation and um, from what i understand the song is about um a sort of t a toxic relationship and the sort of the effect it can have on someone and you know if there's something i know anything about it's definitely how toxic relationships can affect you, because I have had a fair share. Um, so it goes. Disapp disappointed, cold and desperate, you bring me down to my bare knees, but hope will be the last thing to leave my soul. Corrupted and destroyed, but I want to go through it all again. I'll do anything to get you back. So already, you know, it's painting quite the clear picture, you know. Disappointing, cold and desperate, you bring me down to my bare knees. So it's like, you've done these cruel, horrible things to me. You've sort of made me fall to my knees. You've disappointed me, you know. You've you've broken me. You've hurt me, you know. But I will ne he says there, hope will be the last thing to leave my soul. So, you know, I'm never going to give up hope that something good can come from this. You know, maybe, maybe you can change. Maybe something good can come out of this. You know, maybe, you know, if we stick it out, things will get better. Um, corrupted and destroyed. But I want to go through it all again. You know, y you've, you've destroyed me. You've corrupted me, essentially. You know, you've spoiled my view of the world or things like that. You know, you've made me question love and stuff like that you know maybe i've given up hope on love but you know i want to go through it all again for you because i care that much about you you know i'll do anything to get you back and this is just those four lines are quite an accurate description of a toxic relationship you know you've got the one side who's cruel cold and you know they treat you terribly but then on the other side you've got the person that you know despite how horrible that person might be this person you know it's like yes but i i love this person you know there's something about this person that i really really love and you know despite the fact they're being so horrible to me there's still something about them that i want to hold on to because you know when i fell in love with this person there was something there that i fell for there was something about this person that i love and then it's still there underneath all of this other horrendous stuff that's you know that they're doing you know and it's, it's something i can i can associate with very very readily because you know it's, it's something i myself have been through um it goes into the um of course you are my um you, you are my alpha my omega you are my poison and my decay but i've built a wall around my denial Oh, give me heartbreak, give me all of your betrayal, and I will keep... 
it says keep pretting. Um, I think it means I will keep praying that I am happy again. Again. So you are my Alpha and my Omega. Alpha and Omega, that's like... That's like the the beginning of everything, isn't it? I, I can't remember, you know. The Alpha and the Omega, it's like the creation of everything. You are you are my everything essentially but it says that you are also my poison and my decay uh, but i've built a wall around by my denial so like to me you, you are everything you know i love everything I, you know i love you you know there's something about you that i just cannot resist um but you're also causing me tremendous amounts of pain but i've built a wall around my denial so it's like even though you do all these things to hurt me, I'm choosing not to see that. And I'm only choosing to see the good parts in you. You know, I'm seeing, you know, I only want to see the part of you that I fell in love with, not the part that's causing me harm. And again, this is like, um, this is like those, um, it, it's like what happens with uh, some women that suffer from domestic abuse. You know, their husbands beat them black and blue. I, I mean, I could say the same thing for me as well. You know, when I was uh, abused by my ex-girlfriend, you know, they beat you black and blue. You know, they treat you horribly. They do these horrible things to you. And people go, why don't you just leave them? And you turn around and go, but I love them. You know. Yeah, and you don't want to do anything. You don't want to like press charges against them or anything like that. It's, you know, because there's you, you you're you're in denial about the fact that you know this person is actually a really horrible, toxic person. But there's still that something you know that, about them that you love, and you're letting that override the damage that they're doing to you. You know, and it, they've put it perfectly there. Um, it says, "Give me, give me heartbreak. Give me all of your betrayal, and I will keep praying that I am happy again." So uh, I'm pretty sure it means praying, uh, all those written pretting there. Um, so it's like, you give, give me all of this punishment. Give me all of this cruelty. But I'm going to still sit here in the hope that things will get better. You know, I'm going to sit here in the hope that we will be happy as we were probably at the beginning of a late of a relationship. You know. <clears throat> let's suffer just a little bit more because no one can love me the way you do let's pretend that we have changed one more time tomorrow's approaching and happiness will be a thing of the past hold me tight hold me just one last time now th this is an a, some clever wordplay here which again comes into the whole toxic relationship here. Uh, let's suffer just a little bit more because no one can love me the way you do. And this is another thing in a toxic relationship, the way a evil toxic partner sort of holds you there. Because they say, you know, like, if you leave me, no one will love you the way that I do. You know, because this is what a toxic relationship is. You know, the toxic partner as it were sort of systematically breaks you down breaks your self-confidence you know it breaks your self-esteem so you think you know am i you know i am useless i am horrible i am unlovable and you know this person is accepting me for who i am and they're only being horrible to me because i'm not you know because i'm not a very good person you know that's what they do they convince you that you can't live without them and, you know, that's exactly what he said here. Let's suffer just a little bit more because no one can love me the way that you do. So, you know, he's convinced that, you know, if he leaves this relationship, no one's ever going to love him again, you know, because th this person that's treating him so badly is saying, you know, like, you know, if you leave me, no one's going to want you because you're not a nice person. You know, you you're, you're not worth anybody's love. I, I love you, even though I'm horrible to you. Um... And let's pretend that we have changed one more time. You know, again, those arguments where it's like, you know, you treat me like shit and they go, no, I'll do better from now on. And they might do it for like maybe two, three days. And then it goes back to normal where they're beating on you or they're like kicking you out into the street in the middle of the night when it's pissing with rain. Something that's happened to me quite a few times, uh, you know, and, you know, it's like, let, let, let's just pretend things have changed. Let's just pretend that things will get better and then they're just going to go back to normal. And, you know, we won't say anything about it until we next argue and then we repeat the cycle again. 
uh, again, you know, it says that tomorrow is approaching and happiness will be a thing of the past. So, you know, that goes with that. Let's pretend things have changed. You know, so like I said, you know, for a, a day or two, maybe three, you know, things will be all nice and happy, lovey, cuddly, and then things will go back to normal. Um, and then it goes back into that chorus. You are my alpha and my omega. You are my poison and my decay, but have built a wall around my denial. Oh, give me heartbreak. Give me all of your denial. And I will keep praying I am happy again again so there you go so you know the the way this song has been worded is is brilliant you know it's it's not a very long song like i said it's exactly three minutes i believe and you know lyric wise there's only 16 lines to the entire song but the amount of description the amount of information that is in those lines is just perfect you know the the actual wording of the song is so perfect because it it packs so much information into such a small amount of time you know it, it's just brilliantly written and you know like i said the musical performance i think i think it's a very very interesting band you know it's a very interesting sound with the sort of power metal vocals power metal slash 80 early 80s 90s metal sound mixed with the sort of thrash te technical death metal sound i think it's very interesting i think it's a very interesting band and i'm gonna have to look more into them so yeah hmm a very interesting band but i don't know what else i can say about that so i'm gonna leave that as it is um now if you enjoyed this video consider um giving it a like maybe even subscribe if you're not subscribed already because that would help me out uh tremendously um if anybody wants to suggest a track for me to look at then please do by all means uh what i will say though is if you do suggest a track to me and this this goes to bands and just individual people if you're gonna suggest a track to me maybe actually engage in a conversation first or, you know, at least say something. Because I've been getting a lot of people, mostly bands, to be honest, who just send me a link to a YouTube video. They don't say anything. You know, they don't say, hi, I'm from such and such a band. Would you mind looking at this track? They just send me a link to a YouTube video. And that's just incredibly rude, uh, in my opinion. You know, that's, that's that, that to me is like the equivalent of going up to a bar and going and expecting someone to serve you. No, no, it doesn't work like that. If you want me to have a look at a piece of music, ask me. Don't just shove a piece of music in my face. You know, say, maybe check this track out or hi, I'm from such and such a band. You know, would you mind looking at a piece of our music? You know, it, it doesn't hurt to, you know, initiating the conversation. So, you know, if you want to suggest a track, you know, may, maybe say something first rather than just shoving a piece of music in my face. But yeah, if you want to suggest track, then please do. You know, I'm always looking for something new and interesting and different. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't really say much else. So um, yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.